I never told her about Edward Dunn, the new boy in class that my best friend Ruth and I tailed home one day, not knowing what else to do when we liked a boy. Ruth's parents were sober-faced Methodists, her father superintendent of the Sunday school. <laughs> Mine were Arabs who sent me out of the room whenever adult conversation threatened to take an interesting turn. Brissy and smug, Ruth and I made the mistake of hanging out with each other instead of with the C-plus run of girls who were busily piecing together the facts of life. When I finally got wind of how things were, I wanted to be sure, and I was mad. Why should everyone know but me? I found my mother upstairs in my bedroom putting new white sheets on my bed. I want you to tell me where babies come from, I screamed, and I made her do it. In two clipped sentences, which was all she could manage, she diagrammed the mechanics of sex. So it was true. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to put up with it, she said, smoothing out the last wrinkle. It doesn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, when I got my first period, she was all smiles, only astonished that I didn't know what was happening to me. Hadn't I heard girls talk? And no dire warning about boys. No curfews ever or rules about where I could go or friends I could go with. What awful thing does it say about me that she trusted me so? No dates either, of course. I didn't much care except maybe when I missed my senior prom. But since I went to an all-girls school, I would have to do the asking. And though I fantasized about what, and though I, although I fantasized all the time about boys, there was no flesh and blood specimen I could think of to be seen. So my high school years passed without ever having it out. Once I got away to college, my parents couldn't stop me from dating, but the little bit that I did date. They just looked the other way and trusted that once I put my mind to it, I would meet some honorable young man from a good Arab family and marry him, but no hurry about that. Meanwhile, there was speed handsome wasp I dated for most of my junior year. How did you land him? Asked a friend I never forgave. <laughs> <laughs> Once when I was home for the weekend, he picked me up and drove me back to campus. And then a couple of times he dropped by the house when I wasn't there, thinking he could charm my parents into liking him. They were always polite, would not have known how to be otherwise. But they must have wondered, who was this blonde outlander and what did he want from them? Surely not their daughter. That spring break, Steve came by the house again, and we went out somewhere, a party, a movie, bowling, I don't remember. Then came back late, parked the old VW bug down the street, and made out for an hour. At one point, the neighborhood cop, walking his beat, stopped to peer into the car, but when he saw it was only me, he smiled and moved on. My mother met me at the door, beside herself with fury, and I suppose with panic. Where had I been, the wretch that I was, and what had I been doing? She would not let me go to bed until I told. There was so little to tell, but even that little would have been too much for her. It had been a late party, or a movie, or a sting, I said. What was the problem? Well, she scared me that night. I'd been pretending to myself that I could go and come as I pleased. I'd forgotten what she could never forget, the village culture in her bones, the dread of being ashamed, never able to marry off your children or visit your neighbor, the misery of having everyone look through you as if you had ceased to exist or were less than the dirt under their feet. Born in the 19th century and into another world, old enough to be my grandmother, she did her best. And I learned to do my part, lying, and leading a double life, anything rather than rouse a 